Welcome, good afternoon to one and all who have joined us today for the webinar hosted by Transfusion Medicine Academic Society. Today's webinar is aimed at enhancing our knowledge regarding the recent amendments in Drug and Cosmetics Act and Rules. This session will be taken by Dr. P.K. Srikumar, retired Deputy Drugs Controller, Kerala. Now I welcome Dr. Sajit Vilampil to chair the session. Dr. Sajit Vilampil, Professor in Transfusion Medicine, Government Medical College, Wayanad, has done MD in Transfusion Medicine from Government Medical College, Trivandrum, and has got glorious 14 years of teaching experience in Transfusion Medicine. He is the District Nodal Officer for Blood Transfusion Services, Trishur. He is a member of State Hemotherapy Cell Kerala and also Curriculum Committee Member, Examiner, Question Setter, and Interview Member, Government of Kerala. Sir is one of the authors of Kerala State Transfusion Policy and has got 25 publications in various index journals. Sir has presented scientific sessions in various state and national conferences and has received ISBJ Young Scientist Award in 2019. Now over to you, sir. Thank you, Anandol. Uh, on the outset, I would like to thank uh, Timas uh, for uh, giving me a chance to chair this session. So uh, this is one of the most uh, elated or water topic like uh, the updations and changes in uh, DNC Act, especially pertaining to our subject. So uh, we have uh, Sri Kumar, sir. Uh, we know uh, he's uh, like most eminent person, one of the most eminent personalities uh, as far as the drug controller side is concerned. Uh, so CV is very long because he has a, he had a vibrant uh, professional life. So had uh, his B farm and M farm from <coughs> Toronto Medical College, and he was a rank holder. And he has twenty nine years of service and experience in uh, CDSCO field and served as a drug inspector plus many things like technical expert, uh, etc. And uh, Uh, I'm continuing once again. Okay. And uh, uh, he has acted as a vice, uh, vice uh, president for Kerala Pharmacy Graduates Association. And he has published around 26 articles uh, for his credit and a lot more of our uh, to uh, pinpoint uh, best drug controller. He was awarded best drug controller in 2012. And Great Soul Award, Best Regulatory Officer Award, Meritorious Award from his department, Best Pharmacist Award, and lots. Uh, so, welcome you, Sri Kumar, sir. And uh, let me tell you something. Namalka Ariandri Karyam under either drug controller side, Palapur Namuka Grayana. She Sarne Apolar, either Namite Karyang Laria. So it's quite fortunate that the class is not in the class. So, I class. I am not in the class. I am class. I am not in the class. I am so take your own time. We won't get this much chance to hear the drug controller. So uh, take your own time. I have told sir like that. So uh, let sir explain everything. And uh, Timas has got few queries or questions related to uh, blood banking, which has to be asked at the end. So we will be patiently hearing to the sir from starting from his experience from the beginning till date. He has updated till date. Uh, and then we will go for a Q&A session uh, at the end. Um, over to you, Sri Kumar, sir. Thank you. So, uh, once again, sorry, and uh, good afternoon uh, to all. It is a wonderful opportunity uh, to share some of the recent uh, amendments of uh, Drugs and uh, drugs rules, I should say, drugs rules uh, are related to regulatory side of uh, blood centers. And I'm so happy and privileged. And once again, let me express my sincere thanks to Transfusion Academy 
uh, academic society, especially to its president, Dr. Abhishek, and of course, uh, my dear friend, Dr. Rafi, secretary, who invited me to talk on the subject, and uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Sajid, uh, who, has, uh, all, who is chairing the session, and of course, the participants who are uh, the real life of this uh, particular webinar. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, again, there is some issue. Uh, am I audible now? Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. okay. So um, let me start. Uh, so hope I think I could at least uh, run through some of the amendments. Uh, and thanks a lot for your uh, support. And uh, we all know human blood. It is covered under the definition of drug under the section three B of the Drugs and Cosmetics Act. And uh, so. Uh, the blood is to be uh, regulated under uh, Drugs and Cosmetics Act and uh, rules there under. So important events are 1967, Central Government enacted a separate provision that is uh, our uh, Schedule F, Part 12B, in which our uh, rules related to blood sundays or delay it was a uh, blood bank it is incorporated uh, like uh, this uh, various requirements uh, like accommodation uh, technical staff is, um, equipment etc etc so uh, originally state uh, drug control was the 
uh, was appointed as the uh, i mean licensing authority now there is a dual licensing system uh, by the uh, licensing authority state dc as well as uh, central license approving authority that is dcg india the controller general of india in 1992-93 uh, various uh, rules uh, i mean like rule uh, 68a it was inserted and part 10b and uh, part 12b uh, where uh, of the schedule f was amended so uh, rules 122f to a p that is actually the procedures for making applications fees conditions of license etc and 1999 uh, i mean gmp sop and validation of equipments were incorporated in accordance with the with the supreme court uh, order okay so uh, blood center definition uh, is the first uh, i mean amendment and uh, with all these amendments are based on the gsr 166 new delhi the 11th march of 2020 so after the uh, this uh, particular amendment uh, that has become the uh, rule so now we are following these rules so originally blood bank definition all we know a place or organization or unit or institution or other other arrangements made for uh, i mean carrying out all the operations like collection uh, affairs storage uh, processing of blood everything uh, it is there then according to the latest amendment blood center is an authorized which see almost the definition is same but uh, only the change is it is an authorized premises in an organization institution as the case may be carrying out all the operations like processing storage distribution efforts of blood drawn from donors additional point or received from another licensed blood center so it is also that processing is also permitted under uh, the definition of blood center. So it was not permitted as per the uh, uh, previous definition, blood bank. So now blood center allows receiving from another licensed blood center also, uh, receiving blood or components from other, uh, I mean, blood centers, licensed blood centers. So in everywhere, actually this the particular word blood bank is replaced by blood center in the rules next one um say the definition of uh, donor is also having some slight modification or some slight addition that is uh, we all know means a person who voluntarily donate blood after he has been declared fit after a medical examination for donation of blood or fulfilling the criteria given here and after without accepting in return any consideration. It now it has become without accepting against donated unit. That change has come. Okay. Uh, then another thing is the definition of erythrocytophoresis. It is included in this amendment. That means previously there was no erythrocytophoresis definition and it is also included now as the means selective collection of one or two units of red cells from donor or patient using a cell separator and retransfusing the remaining blood into the donor or patient. So these are the uh, main parts, uh, I mean main amendments in the case of uh, uh, I mean, I mean, in the beginning, just a minute. Eh? Okay, then uh, one of the major uh, change or amendment is in the qualification of medical officer. We all know as per rule 122 G, a full time medical officer should be there for personal supervision and for active direction for the functioning of the of a blood center so he should be a whole time employee of course there is no change in that but in the qualification path there are some changes of course degree in um, medicine mbbs is permitted and uh, uh, it should have 
he should have a uh, an experience of not less than one year during the regular service it is an additional qualification actually in the original it was adequate experience but now it has become not less than one year uh, experience during regular service and another is degree in mbbs with a diploma in clinical pathology actually earlier it was a diploma in pathology only and here it is clinical pathology is also included and uh, the old one diploma in pathology and uh, bacteriology with uh, here six months experience it is necessary earlier it was adequate knowledge so that two difference uh, in the existing i mean uh, um, uh, rules and uh, addition degree in medicine mbbs with a diploma in transfusion medicine or diploma in immunohematology or blood transfusion with three months experience in a licensed blood center or doctor of medicine pathology or diplomat of national board pathology with three months experience in a licensed blood center these are all additional uh, i mean qualifications then uh, post graduate degree in transfusion medicine doctor of medicine transfusion medicine or diplomat of uh, national board transfusion medicine or doctor of medicine immunohematology and blood transfusion these are also included in the uh, qualification part so there is a clause that in case of availability of both md or dnb in transfusion medicine and md or dnb pathology preference shall be given to md or dnb in transfusion medicine in medical college colleges or teaching institutes after fulfilling eligibility criteria for the post so that additional uh, clause is also there uh, next one is in the case of uh, applications made for the grant or renewal of the license we all know the renewal period the 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 uh, renewal period is of 5 years i mean um, uh, the the uh, i mean 5 years is the validity period and the renewal we have to make and for uh, application for grant or renewal of the license so Uh, we know the the government uh, can start a blood center in the red cross society hospital charitable trust or voluntary organization and the blood center run by charitable trust or voluntary organization need to be approved by the sbtc or union territory blood transfusion council that is already there in the previous law but now specification has been uh, included as uh, the uh it is approved by the state or un union territory blood transfusion council as per the procedure laid down in this regard by the national blood transfusion council so that particular procedure has to be followed uh, uh in the case of a state uh, uh sbtc i mean okay then another thing is you see regarding the uh accommodation part we know uh, there are uh, there should be uh, eight separate uh, rooms for uh, one is registration and medical examination with adequate furniture and facilities uh, in a blood, blood center i mean then blood collection uh, area or uh, room then blood component preparation laboratory for uh, blood group serology then for laboratory for uh, transmissible diseases then sterilization cup washing refreshment cup uh, uh, restroom and store cup records so in addition to that now there should be a separate room for the counseling area with adequate privacy and of course an identified quality control area in the component preparation area should also be uh provided so these are the two uh, additions one is counseling area and another thing is identified quality control area in the component separation area and uh, blood bank technicians qualification has also been widened and uh, diploma in dmlt we all know and it should have one year experience of testing originally now dmlt or transfusion medicine blood bank technology is also included next one uh, bmlt degree in uh, medical laboratory technician 
technology here also or blood bank technology with six months experience with six months experience it's already there but in the qualification it can be either degree in medical laboratory technology or blood bank technology another addition is bsc in hematology and transfusion medicine with six months experience or msc in transfusion medicine with six months experience or postgraduate diploma in medical laboratory technique uh, technology, PGD, MLT, uh, or postgraduate diploma in medical laboratory science, PGD, MLS, with six months experience are also counted or acceptable uh, to become a uh, blood bank technician. The same is the case of uh, technical supervisor in the case of uh, blood component preparation also here also a diploma in medical uh, laboratory technology or transfusion medicine or blood bank technology or blood degree in medical laboratory technology plus blood bank technology with six months experience or bsc hematology and transfusion medicine with six months experience msc uh, with six months experience then postgraduate diploma in medical laboratory technology with six months experience the testing of uh, i mean blood or components is there specific and postgraduate diploma in transfusion technology approved by central government or state government with six months experience are also counted. So last, I mean, BSc in hematology, MSc in transfusion medicine, postgraduate diploma in medical laboratory uh, technology, then postgraduate diploma in transfusion technology. These are the additions as per this amendment. Then, uh, see, in the case of uh, blood centers organizing, uh, particularly donation camps, it is specific that the counselor, a counselor should be, one or two counselors should be there, and uh, each, they should have a master's degree in social work, sociology, psychology with six months experience, or degree in science or health science with one year experience, or even person with 10 plus two having three years experience in the field of counseling in a blood center collecting blood not less than uh, 3000 units per annum can share counselor or medical social worker within the institution like that it is uh, included then in the calibration part of there are uh, around 15 equipment which are to be calibrated under the rule and additionally standard uh, certified weights it should be uh, calibrated once in a year then equipment for uh, tti a lab like uh, elisa plate or reader uh, that should be calibrated once in a year and it should be standardized by each run and the chemiluminescence uh, immunoassay CLIA or uh, ELFA enzyme linked fluorescence assay it should be uh, I mean standardized each day of use and micro pipettes if LISA is used micro pipettes it should be calibrated once in a year so these last uh, two three numbers it is an addition as per the uh, it has become mandatory okay then um uh, the criteria for blood donation it's uh, almost uh, a lot of changes are there now so originally it was uh, you know uh, well being of a person is very important uh, he is uh, he should be very alert and uh, he should not be an inmate of uh, uh, jail everything it was there originally but now differentially abled or donor with communication and sight difficulties can donate blood provided uh, the clear and the confidential communication can be established and uh, he should be fully uh, he should uh, fully understands the donation process and uh, gives a valid content, uh, a concept that means differentially uh, abled persons are all also allowed to be a donor provided certain conditions have to be satisfied Okay, then regarding age, there is some more specification. Minimum age, of course, 18, maximum 65. But in the case of first time donor shall be uh, only up to 60 year, uh, we can collect uh, uh, blood. So uh, for repeat donors, it can be extended up to 65 years. And for aphoresis, it is 
from 18 to 60 years so it has become more uh, more uh, clear and the whole blood uh, volume collected should be for uh, say 45 kg uh, to uh, 55 uh, kg it is 350 ml and uh, uh, above that uh, 450 ml can be collected and the, in case of aphoresis uh, the minimum is 50 kg and the donation interval is also it has got some clarity for whole blood donation once in three months that means 90 days and for males but for females it is uh, it is 120 days and for aphoresis at least 40 Eight hours intervals after plated plasma aphoresis shall be kept. That means not more than two times in a week and limited to 24 maximum in one year. And uh, uh, see, uh, in the case of uh, a donor, he shall not uh, donate any type of donation within 12 months after a bone marrow harvest and or within six months after a peripheral stem cell harvest. And blood pressure, it is 100 to 140 millimeter Hg systolic uh, uh, and 60 to 90 millimeter as diastolic with or without medication is allowed. So, uh, but there should not be any finding suggestive of end, end organ damage or some sort of secondary uh, complications. So, uh, in the case of pulse, it is uh, 60 to 100. That is uh, the regular pulse. And uh, temperature, febrile 37 degrees Celsius or 98.4 degree uh, Fahrenheit. Then respiration, the donor shall be free from acute respiratory diseases. There is not much change in that. And hemoglobin minimum in India, uh, it is 12.5 grams per deciliter. So the thalassemia patients may be accepted, provided hemoglobin should be in the acceptable range. Then meals also, it is specifically, it is specific here. So uh, a donor, uh, his uh, last meal should have been taken at least four hours prior to donation. That means there should not be any fasting. And uh, donor shall not have consumed alcohol and he, he should not be a regular heavy alcohol intaker. Um, then uh, some... Oh, one minute. So if occupation is also, uh, it is also included and uh, a person who is uh, uh, working uh, continuously for uh, 24 hours and uh, or uh, he's in, if he is in emergency service or in even a driver, I mean, uh, who is driving for uh, more than, I mean, uh, long distance or in the sea level or in the uh, flight, uh, the donor shall not be a night shift worker. So at least 24 hours prior to the next duty shift, uh, I mean, uh, he shall not uh, donate blood at least 24 hours prior to their next duty shift. Like that, it is specified. Then risk behavior, it is there. He should not be a, I mean, HIV or HB or a C, HIB C patient, HIC. Uh, I mean, uh, hepatitis C uh, infection should be avoided. And uh, men who have sex with men or female sex workers or injecting drug users, persons with uh, multiple sexual partners or uh, any other high risk, uh, including, uh, I mean, um, the daily uh, drug abuses, these should be avoided. Then travel and distance, the donor shall not be a person with a history of residence or travel in a geographical area which is prone to or which is endemic for disease that can be transmitted by blood transfusion. It is, uh, uh, that means it is uh, restricted. Then donor skin also is, uh, earlier uh, this uh, tattoo and the skin scars only it was there and now donor shall be free from any diseases at the site of lobotomy, including the, the scars indicative of professional blood uh, donation uh, donors or addiction of self-injected narcotics. It is not permitted.
One minute, please. And uh, pregnancy or racially delivered uh, deferment for uh, 12 months, then abortion six months, uh, breastfeeding, uh, uh, defer for total period of lactation, it's, uh, that change is there. Earlier, it was 12 months, then menstruation, defer for the period of menstruation, then uh, non-specific illness uh, like uh, general malaise or pain or headache, in the case, uh, in that case, defer until all symptoms subside and donor is febrile. Then respiratory or lung diseases, cold, flu, cold, sore throat or uh, some sort of acute sinusitis differ until all symptoms subside and donor is febrile. Then in the case of chronic sinusitis, uh, accept unless on antibiotics. Asthmatic attack, attack permanently defer and asthmatic on steroids have to be permanently deferred. Then surgical procedures, major surgery, defer for 12 months after recovery. And in the case of minor surgery, it is for six months after recovery. So one person who is receiving a blood transfusion can, um, I mean, donate blood uh, only after 12 months. And uh, open heart surgery, uh, surgery including, I mean, uh, this, uh, uh, I uh, like that, uh, the, see, uh, heart surgeries, uh, see, uh, and all the heart surgeries and the heart, even heart patients, they have to be uh, permanently deferred. And the cancer surgery is also like that. Then uh, tooth extraction for four, six months. Um, and dental surgery, another six months. Then cardiovascular diseases, whole uh, cases, we should uh, defer uh, the donors. Then central nervous system, migraine, it can be, cases can be accepted if not severe and once uh, occurs at a frequency of less than once in a week. Um, then convulsion, uh, convulsions and uh, epilepsy and schizophrenia, they should be permanently deferred. In the, in the case of anxiety or mood disorders, uh, if they are feeling well on the day, regardless of medication, uh, it can be accepted. Uh, then diabetes also, there are various, uh, then uh, usual diabetic patients with uh, well-controlled with uh, diet or something like that, they can uh, they can be permitted, and uh, but a patient on insulin cannot be considered as donor. And uh, if oral hypoglycemic medication has been altered or dosage adjusted in the last uh, four weeks, again it can be uh, it cannot be permitted. Then in the case of thyroid diseases, uh, the see individuals with the benign thyroid disorders of uh, if you thyroid or uh, I mean, uh, it, it should be deferred if he is under uh, investigation. And, uh, and uh, permanently, uh, uh, see, in the case of thyroid toxicosis due to Graves' disease, hyper or hypothyroid or history of malignant thyroid tumors, uh, they should be permanently deferred. Other endocrine disorders, they should be, should not be allowed to donate. Then liver disease and hepatitis cases, known hepatitis B, C, no donation. Then unknown hepatitis, there is no donation. And the known hepatitis A or E, it can be deferred for 12 months. Uh, and in the case of spouse or partner or close contact of individual suffering with hepatitis, he should be deferred for a period of 12 months. Again, if he is at risk for hepatitis by tattoos or acupuncture or body piercing or other sort of cosmetic procedure, they again defer for 12 months. Then the spouse or partner of individual receiving blood transfusions also uh, deferred for 
uh, 12 months. And in the case of jaundice, it can be accepted provided donor with the history of jaundice that was attributed to gallstones or RS disease or mononucleosis or in neonatal period, it is allowed. Then chronic liver diseases, a patient should be permanently deferred. Uh, if he is at risk of HIV, uh, no donation. Then non-HIV positive persons or spouse or partner of, uh, I mean, person living with HIV AIDS, it should not be considered. They should not be considered. Then persons having symptoms of or suggestive of AIDS should also be exempted. Uh, no, also not to be considered. Then sexually transmitted disease like syphilis, gonorrhea, permanently deferred. Uh, then other infectious diseases like measles, mumps, chicken pox differ for two weeks following full recovery. Then malaria differ for three months following full recovery. And typhoid differ for 12 months following full recovery. Then dengue and chicken gunia, in case of history, uh, then differ for six months following full recovery and following visit to dengue or chicken gunia endemic area, four weeks. Uh, a time should be allowed um, to donate blood. And I mean, uh, only after that, uh, that four weeks, uh, he can be allowed to donate. Then uh, Sika virus, uh, in the case of Sika infection, differ for four months following recovery and West Nile virus, uh, four months again, uh, in the case of West Nile also. <coughs> tuberculosis it should be not uh, anyway after uh, two years it can be permitted if he is perfectly all right and uh, leishmaniasis permanently deferred and leprosy also permanently it should be deferred other uh, infections uh, like uh, conjunctivitis uh, differ for a period of illness and uh, a continuation of uh, local medication and the osteomyelitis also differ for two years following completion of treatment and the cure. Then kidney diseases, acute infection cases, we, uh, six months time, uh, after six months, uh, uh, after, uh, I mean, complete recovery, it can be permitted and acute infection of bladder. There also, uh, I mean, another two weeks after uh, the complete recovery and last dose of uh, medications allowed. Then chronic infection there, uh, of kidney, uh, it should be permanently deferred. Then digestive system, diarrhea, it is permitted, provided person having history of diarrhea in preceding week, particularly if associated with uh, fever, and defer for two weeks after complete recovery and last dose of medication. Then gastrointestinal endoscopy, uh, deferment is for, for uh, 12 months and uh, acid peptic uh, disease in the case of uh, acid reflux, mild gastroesophageal reflux, mild hiatus uh, hernia, uh, then GERD, then hiatus hernia, uh, it can be, uh, blood can be accepted, but uh, he should be permanently deferred uh, if he is having stomach ulcer with symptoms or with recurrent bleeding. Then autoimmune diseases uh, and polycythemia vera, blood bleeding disorders, then malignancy, severe allergic disorders, uh, hemoglobinopathy, these cases should not be considered. Then in the case of vaccination, if it is uh, known, live vaccine and toxoid uh, differ for uh, 14 days. And in the case of live attenuated vaccines, uh, they should be deferred for 28 days. Then anti tetanus serum, anti venom serum, or anti diphtheria, or anti gas gangrene serum, uh, they should be deferred for 28 days. And anti rabies vaccination, it is for one year. Then swine flu is also included. Deferment is for uh, 15 days. Then if a person is on oral consumptive uh, or analgesics or vitamins, it can be, the blood can be accepted. Then um, a ketoconazole, etc., it can it should be deferred for seven days. Then allopurinol or cholesterol levering agents, I mean uh, tablets, it can be accepted. Then antibiotics uh, deferment can be for a period of two weeks after last dose if donor is okay. Then uh, 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 clopidogrel uh, and pyroxicam, etc., the same condition. Uh, then uh, this finasteride uh, used to treat benign 
prostatic uh, i mean hyperplasia deferment is for one month um, and in the case of radioactive contrast materials eight weeks is the time uh, then uh, any medication unknown if it is unknown in nature then defertil details are available then oral anti diabetic agents it can be accepted provided if there is no alteration in a dose within last four weeks then insulin again is not permitted then anti arrhythmic uh, um, arrhythmic or anti convulsions or anti coagulants or anti thyroid drugs cytotoxic drugs so they should not be considered other conditions uh, i mean organ recipients then stem cell and uh, tissue transplants cases they should be permanently deferred or donors who have had an unexplained delayed faint or delayed faint with injury or two consecutive faints following a blood donation they should not be considered and in the case of residents of other countries if they are uh, in india for the last uh, three continuous uh, years they can be considered for donation so these are the uh, major changes in the criteria for the selection uh, of donors then uh, in the case of uh, blood camps uh, another uh, thing i it is see all the the camps can be conducted by any licensed designated regional blood transfusion center or private or government institutes or uh, i mean blood centers or indian red cross society but uh, here designated regional blood transfusion center shall be a center approved and designated by a blood transfusion council constituted by a state government again in accordance with the procedures laid down by the national blood transfusion council so that uh, part is uh, i mean included also uh, in the case of uh, blood camps there should be two counselors or medico uh, social workers so two counselors it is an addition so any uh, regarding the processing of blood components uh, see uh, we know uh, the equipment required are uh, air conditioner laminar air flow branch then suitable refrigerator centrifuge plasma expressor additionally or automated extractor or multi head tube sealer it's also included so it is it has become mandatory plasma expressor or in case if it is not there automated extractor or multi head tube sealer can be provided so that's a change and and in the case of defreezes or snap freezer it is also allowed earlier it was only defreezer then cryobath and any better equipment or technology any better equipment or technology it is allowed here okay these are the three changes in the equipment part then uh, uh, regarding the categories of blood components uh somebody is making some i mean lines and all that so concentrated human red blood corpuscles there are lot of changes and uh, types of red blood components like uh, saline washed red cells red cells washed with the sterile normal saline by centrifugation 2 to 8 degrees celsius centigrade then uh, leuco depleted red cells etc were added in the new rule and irradiated red cells then frozen packed red blood cells then packed red cell a liquid prepared for transfusion to pediatric patients uh, etc were included and 1% of the packed red cells may be tested of which at least 75% of the packed red cells shall confirm to uh, the i mean criteria that means volume 250 ml Uh, plus or minus 10% from 450 ml bag and 150 ml plus or minus 10% from 350 ml bag that means 75% of the total 1% of packed cells uh, tested should have this volume criteria also the hemocrit i mean 65 to 70% when stored in cpda one solution and in the case of sagam solution it should be 50 to 60% and the culture 
is also, I mean, that should be sterile. That's also included. So remaining all the parts, it is same. So these are the addition in the case of concentrated human red blood corpuscles. Next, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the platelet concentrator. So the originally the it is there the plate the addition is uh, is types of plate platelets that means platelet rich plasma and uh, see separated from whole blood random donor plate uh, platelet concentrate prepared from platelet rich plasma or prepared from buffy coat and pooled platelets prepared by pooling of six units of random donor plate preferably ABO or RS type mast are pooled into one bag of pooled platelets. That's the addition in that part. Because it is uh, too much, that's why I'm a little bit uh, faster. Then compatibility test, in the case of uh, platelet uh, concentrate, general requirements such as source, then processing, storage, other uh, testing, uh, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, everything same as the previous case. But additionally, uh, after the compatibility test, uh, preparation of pooled platelet concentrate is also included. So here, one single unit of random donor platelet is not enough to provide adequate, I mean, hemostatic dose in an adult patient. So uh, we should take six units of random donor platelets. Uh, then the pooled platelets may be prepared by pooling buffy coats, and that goes into one unit of pooled buffy coats. Uh, then alternately pooling can be done after preparing preparation of random uh, donor platelets by platelet rich plasma method or buffy coat method. So this preparation aspect of pooled pl platelet concentrate is specifically mentioned in the uh, current amendment. So, and the expiry date, everything, it is uh, it is there. Then, uh, say, the plated content in the pooled uh, product should be um, equal or uh, not more than, um, not less than 2 into uh, 10 raised to 11 per unit. That's also included. Then, in the case of granulocyte, Actually, it's storage and the unit of granulocytes, it was there previously. And it is that part is substituted by granulocyte concentrate prepared either by pooling, that preparation method is also included, pooling multiple units of buffy coat or apheresis as described under apheresis section. Uh, the temperature is same 24, uh, 20 to 24 degrees Celsius. Uh, uh, one day is the maximum. Uh, I mean, expiry period, then blue pooled granulocytes should meet the same quality control requirements as that of aphoresis granulocytes. Then group specific tests and the latest, et cetera, it is already there. Previously also it is there. And fresh frozen plasma, additionally, the quality control criteria for validation uh, should be a volume again, 180 to 220 ml from 350 ml bag and uh, from 450 ml bag, it is 220 to 300 ml. And the fact rate, at least uh, 70 IU per bag. Then excess and expired plasma may be issued for fractionation to the licensed fractionation center in the country with justification to be recorded in uh, writing. That means if there is a, uh, I mean, excess and expired plasma, it can be transferred to, uh, I mean, a licensed fractionation center with justification, which is to be recorded in writing. Then concentrated anti-humophilic uh, factor shall be prepared by thawing. That, that part is there already. It's storage activities there. So that is substituted <coughs> by concentrated Concentrate of anti-humophilic factor shall be prepared by thawing. Again, that preparation method. FFP at uh, 4 degrees Celsius in a cold room or blood bank refrigerator or 4 to 10 degrees Celsius in a cryo bath. Minus 80 degrees Celsius defreezer should be used for faster freezing of plasma for preparation of cryoprecipitate. Then quality control criteria is also uh, mentioned. Uh, then volume should be 15 to 20 ml. Fibrinogen at least uh, 150 milligram per bag. Then fact rate uh, at least 80 AU per bag. Then preparation of pooled uh, cryoprecipitate is also uh, specified. Then one single unit of cryoprecipitate is not enough to. So here also, therefore, multiple uh, units of 
cryo precipitate may be pooled in one bag if the pooling is done in open system the shelf life should not be greater than uh, six hours so that change then labeling requirements everything uh, see should have the uni unique pool number or donation numbers of all contributing units it should be uh, there okay then Next one regarding plasma pharesis, platelet pharesis, etc. Then apheresis using a cell separate. General requirement we know it is 10 square meter uh, minimum uh, that apheresis area. And the therapeutic procedures in the blood center it, it shall be provided for apheresis or therapeutic procedures in the blood center. Then equipment is almost same cell separated dielectric a tube sealer, other emergency equipment items, oxygen cylinder, 5%. Uh, uh, the glucose or normal saline, disposable syringe and needle, then uh, disposable serial IV infusion set, ampules of adrenaline, noradrenaline, mephentin, uh, beta methasone, dexamethasone, metoclopramide injection, aspirin. Everything is uh, almost the same, but in the aphoresis case, it is uh, specifically mentioned. Originally, it was not there. It was in the, uh, I mean, conditions for uh, a blood bank only. Now, in the case of aphoresis also, this right particular uh, criteria is included and uh, criteria for uh, selection of donors in, in this case is at least 48 hours uh, in between successive efforts and not more than twice in a week so it is uh, uh, further it is specified and types of aphoresis are uh, again, plasma pharesis, platelet pharesis, uh, or uh, leuka pharesis, glandulocyte concentrate, lymphocytes, mononuclear cells, erythrocyte pharesis, it, it is included. Then hemopoietic stem cells, it is also included as the type of pharesis. Then next, uh, in the case of plasma uh, pharesis, all these are newer things. The total serum protein shall be 6 grams per deciliter before the first plasma pharesis procedure. In repeated, uh, it should be tested before the third procedure, if done within four weeks, and shall be 6 grams per deciliter. The quantity of plasma separated for, from the blood of donor shall not exceed uh, see, 100 ml per city and once in a fortnight or shall not exceed 1000 ml per uh, month. Then in the case of platelet pharesis, platelet pharesis shall not be carried out on donors who have taken medication containing aspirin uh, within three days. So that, that uh, deferment should be there. And I think it's uh, already discussed. Then plated count, WBC count, differential count, it can be carried out. Then the term plated aphoresis includes platelets containing aphoresis using a cell separator. And the product is called a single donor platelets and include washed single donor platelets, modified sing, uh, single donor platelets. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the uh, single donor platelets should have a plated count of, uh, uh, I mean, equal or uh, not. Um, uh, less than uh, 3 into 10 raised to 11 units and the storage of course 5 days uh, in 20 to 24 degrees Celsius, uh, Celsius and pH must be 6 so all the tests are there it is then uh, leukopheresis, uh, then a collection of uh, granulocytes, uh, then lymphocytes, peripheral blood cells or hemopoietic stem cells for the treatment of traditional conditions followed by their preservation. Then erythropheresis uh, is there as the collection of two units of red cells uh, from a single donor meeting specific requirements. Then therapeutic plasma pharesis and cytopheresis is also uh, permitted. So uh, here, therapeutic Apheresis activities allowed in the blood center attached to the hospital having apheresis facilities under the responsibility of RMP who has obtained the consent of patient and the record of it shall be maintained and signed by the RMB. This is the condition for therapeutic plasma pharesis and cytopheresis. It is, uh, I mean, amendment this is very important. And the blood bank medical officer, it should be signed to by RMP and uh, blood bank medical officer. So this shall be done only at the written request of the patient's physician. So patients inform the consent should also be there and the course of all the procedures shall be maintained. Provisions of emergency care shall be available by the patient's 
physician. That is also another condition. So that, that's important. So this is these are the main amendments. And uh, uh, I think uh, I can conclude with this. Uh, and uh, the question uh, and queries can be discussed now. I don't know, Dr. Sajit, whether he is there. So we can move to, I mean, already it is one hour, then we can move to the next part, discussions, discussions on queries. Yes, sir, you can go ahead with this. Yeah. So if um, the query, the, the questions, whether I should uh, present or uh, you will, uh, I mean, the chair will uh, ask. Eh? Excuse me. Uh, Sajid sir will be just joining. Like he when uh, he like we can display in the slide itself. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, all the questions I didn't. Uh... Okay. Uh, the thing is like uh, sir is a regulatory person, and we have Dr. Sajid also along with us. So if any technical queries are there, uh, sir will try or actually, try. actually yeah. I, I sent it to Dr. Sajid yesterday. And uh, anyway, I know the points. Uh, shall I uh, go through it? Uh, yes, sir. What no. are the what are the main changes uh, in the amendments? Somebody has asked. Main changes. So these are the main changes actually from the previous uh, drug rules. These are the amendments already we discussed. Eh? If uh, there is any further queries, you can ask, please. First question was, what are the main changes in the amendments? So already this is, it is discussed. Next one is, uh, as per the WHO, uh, I mean, normal SB range is uh, uh, 15 to 17. So let's, uh, let me take the question, sir, one minute. Yeah, Dr. Sajid uh, has also joined. Oh, okay, okay. Then he can, um, he can ask the question. Okay, thank you, thank you. There was some problem with that unmuting and all. I'm here. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, sir, uh, first of all, uh, I mean, sincere thanks from our side because it was like uh, a comprehensive and elaborate talk and uh, it, it's covered uh, very beautifully. So uh, uh, the uh, members, we have collected few questions from the members. Um, so can we go to those, those questions directly, sir? Yes, please. Yeah, actually, if you are a technical, so more or less, it might not be a Q&A session. It, uh, rather, it can be a discussion mode. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm moving on to the uh, questions uh, as it has come. Um, first question was from Vineet and he has asked like uh, it, it was a generalized question. He was from Blood Center Bharati Hospital and he has asked what are the main changes? I think sir has uh, covered it uh, uh, already. So we will go to the next question. Or, uh, yeah, yeah. Already do you like to, yeah. Or do you like to add anything something more like newer changes he has asked about sir has Included it in your slide itself, right, sir? Yeah. Yeah. So we will go for next question. Next question was by uh, Dr. Jyoti Bharati. Uh, she is basically from King George Medical University. So her query was like, "What is the upper uh, cutoff range of hemoglobin for men and women for whole blood donation? Uh, according to WHO, normal HB for men is 15 to 17, and according to DCA." Uh, it's 12.5 according to DCA men uh, are anemic with comparison to WHO for donation. So the question is basically like uh, two things. Uh, one is uh, 
the lower level of hemoglobin and again upper level. DNC is not mentioning something about upper level or something like that. So uh, yeah, can yeah, you give yeah. some clarification? Uh, it will be nicer. Uh, I think, uh, see, uh, anyway, it is uh, your upper cut of uh, upper, I mean, that uh, hemoglobin level, it is not mentioned in the uh, DNC. And uh, uh, say in the case of, I think, uh, men below 13.1 uh, is considered as anemic uh, here. I don't know whether it is correct or not. But anyway, it is uh, DC permits uh, the safer side 12.5. Of course, it will be lower than 13.1. Uh, and I think uh, it's say, it is safe up to maximum, uh, I mean, level up to 12.5 in the Indian scenario, it is okay. I think it's safe. So maybe the reason, I cannot, uh, I mean, adduce much on that. Maybe okay. the reason. Okay. I think you can you can give a better picture on that. Yeah, right. I think uh, upper limit, 12.5 uh, is like, uh, even though the WHO is certain or something, 12.5 is okay. And as I said, with our experience, 12.5 is quite okay with us for both females and males, both are same value. Uh, but upper limit, always there was a confusion. So now I think the consensus is like um, uh, the uh, polycythemia range, if it's above that, uh, now, especially in Kerala, a lot of donors are coming with a higher range of hemoglobin. Our consensus is somewhat like uh, when they are coming in a polycythemic range, we have to uh, rule out polycythemia era, or it's just uh, okay with that, that we have to rule out and take only. And if any additional suggestions or any policy that some blood bank is uh, going with that hemoglobin policy, you can add. Just uh, unmute and add. I think the... Um, Coordinators can uh, make uh, ch give chance to unmute themselves. Uh, I think it's on. If it's on, uh, someone can add on it. Uh, if there is some different policy or some more important point that uh, uh, which can throw light uh, into our science. I think the quorum is full. Ninety nine participants are there. So some yeah, sweet pairing might be there regarding this hemoglobin policy. Yeah, no, if anybody wants to unmute, they can directly unmute and talk too. I think rather than uh, detection of anemia, they would want to have a, what you call, a fit donor to donate. So that's, that would be the reason for the 12.5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apart from this, uh, that's also important. Okay. And the DCG India formulate all the changes uh, based on the, I mean, advice from technical persons like you people and through hemovigilance system. Also. So I think the upper, upper cut, uh, maybe in the next amendment, it may come. I don't know. Uh, okay. Okay. If, like discussion is uh, off, then we, uh, shall we move to the next question? Okay, fine. Uh, yes. From GH Nayatingara, Dr. Lalu Sundara has answered this question. It's like in government blood banks, license issued is uh, in the name of Supran. What percentage is the liability of Supran if a court awards certain compensation? That was his first question. And uh, second question is uh, totally different, by, but I, I am uh, going to that question. For giving consent for storage center uh, for mother blood bank, who is uh, responsible? So uh, going into the first question, so what is your opinion? Like the uh, blood bank is under Sopran, or he is a licensee, I mean, uh, license holder. So if there is a litigation, then who will be uh, in trouble? Uh, in short, like who will be in suit? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 See, according to DNC Act, uh, uh, the licensee and the technical persons involved in the procedures or any person, any person involved will have equal liability. I mean, that is equally penalized. A licensee means he should have an involvement in the control over the operations and hence, uh, I mean, his liability can't be ignored. So our, uh, I mean, penal provision under section 18, it prohibits man manufacture, and the sale of certain drugs and cosmetics. Uh, I mean, a not of standard drugs. I mean, blood is also a drug. Then uh, this adulterated drug uh, and spurious 
uh, so on. So uh, under the uh, section uh, under section eighteen, uh, a person, no person shall himself or by any other person on this behalf uh, manufacture for sale these kind of drugs. And uh, part twelve b, I mean requirements of for the functioning and operation of a blood bank should also be observed. By a licensing, there is a condition, and in the uh, I mean in the license also in the lower part you can see the conditions of license as per the license uh, I mean issued. There it is specifically written that the licensee shall neither collect from any professional donor or paid donor or shall be prepared a blood component from the blood collected from such donor. So these conditions are there for the licensing. So naturally, he should have the, uh, I mean, the rule. Uh, if it is not in the right, uh, then he will be, he will also be penalized. But one thing is, if in the government sector, if a person is uh, made to be accused, then government sanction should also be obtained. So this is what, uh, and in the court also, you can, uh, you can. Uh, I mean, I do use evidence that you are having no rules like that. Only the court can decide. Otherwise, so printer will also be in the array of accused. Uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, like, can I have a question? I, I don't know. Uh, I, uh, I think it's like, okay. Hello. Uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, Hello? Let, uh, uh, can, can I ask something extra like? Uh, I think ah. Lalu might have been uh, thinking like if there's a problem like some TTI uh, negative, you didn't consider it negative, but it was really positive due to some uh, that false negative value. Someone have issued that unit and again, it's going to a litigation or some transfusion reaction has gone. So whether it is a combined responsibility of that uh, blood bank medical officer and uh, uh, license holder or uh, like that, th that might be, uh, uh, that might be one of his query, I think. Uh, I, so th I that, think that in, uh, but, yeah, tell me, tell me. Yeah, th th in such a situation, okay. like pure uh, clinical mishap due to that blood processing or something. So who will be considered responsible? First person to be responsible or something like that. Might yeah, be. First person will be the soprint as the, he's the licensee. He should have full control and supervision in the functioning. Second one is a medical officer, and the third one is uh, the technician. In that case, technician or technical supervisor. So all the three will be penalized. Yeah, yeah it's very clear now, sir. And yeah. Lalu's second question was like, uh, uh, who can decide whether mother blood bank can provide uh, uh, their blood to a storage center? Who is ultimately, uh, who can decide like that, uh, Lalo has asked. So who is uh, the person to decide whether uh, this blood center can provide uh, blood to a, a storage center? Uh, who is this person? I, I, I couldn't get you, please. Uh, mother, is blood bank, they, 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 uh, they penal, penal, Penal section or? Uh, no, no penal section. Sorry, it was second question. Ah, ah okay. Different okay, question. Okay. I did, uh, uh, okay. So, uh, uh, ah. a few storage center or few hospital wish to start storage center and they yeah. uh, need a mother blood bank. Sometimes they'll yeah. be uh, coming to a hospital. So, sometimes yeah. in, in, in uh, the hospital itself, there might be disparity, like the sufren might be willing, but the administration might not be higher, administration might not be willing, or blood bank medical officer might not be willing, but sufren is willing like that. So, who might be the ultimate authority to decide, yes, this blood bank can be uh, a, a mother a mother center for a storage center? So, actually, in the rule, it is clearly mentioned that uh, the consent of mother a blood bank should be obtained. So naturally, who is the authority means there is no specification on that in the blood center rules. But only thing, the consent of the mother blood bank should be there while yes. applying for uh, blood center. That, that is the only thing it is there. And it is the 
internal matter i mean maybe within your yeah. uh, mother's uh, i mean i think system. like uh, as sir said yeah. license holder will be having a power on that also like if uh, uh, as the previous question was the yeah definitely if he should have uh, you know candidate. yeah definitely he cannot he cannot deny it in fact if the uh, blood center is uh, going well he cannot deny supply or giving the consent i think so is it okay. yeah it's clear and uh, next question was from b shakti priya uh, from sra medical center she has asked whether any change in emergency drug list in blood center in recent guidelines sir and uh, no madam uh, there is no uh, uh, change but in the aphoresis part also this particular emergency drug list is included the same okay there is okay. only change okay. there is no change thank you sir and next to a question was from dr reema uh, kusumgar she is from uh, gcri ahmedabad uh, so why pgd mlt mandatory she has asked like that i mean the, the uh, uh, for technicians or like that why it's mandatory they can she have asked like that it is one of actually it is one of the conditions that's all uh, it, uh, i mean a technician or technical staff can be dmlt Uh, or a degree in uh, MLT uh, or B.Sc. Hematology or M.Sc. Translation Medicine with six months experience or postgraduate diploma in medical laboratory technology like that it is coming and uh, it is equally important I think they can be uh, made it uh, I mean the technicians and uh, their can, uh, name can be uh, endorsed and uh, not necessarily. Uh, he should be a pg diploma in medical laboratory technology it can be i mean okay. one of the options yeah it's one of the option yeah obviously it was there in the slides also right yeah, uh, yeah. sir next uh, question is from dr nitya mohan she is basically from gmc kannur she is an assistant professor there so she has asked which all documents has to be attached while enrolling a new person to the uh, license and uh, one uh, one more question she has while applying to renewal of a uh, uh, license which all documents so two things she has asked one is addition of a person and two is new license uh, so can you give uh, uh, okay. some uh, direction on that yeah 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 actually in the kerala the actually the, the name is endorsed by the state drug controller after getting the license so in kerala we are following one of course covering letter should be there from the superintendent or the licensee or the secretary of any organization or something like that so you have to affix a, a court fee stamp of uh, rupees 5 this is for kerala only and uh, second thing here we are uh, collecting a chalan for 1105 it is non non statutory uh, i mean fee it is uh, as per the direction of government based on a government circular 1105 uh, the chalan uh, 0210041499 is the uh, i mean uh, head of account and you should uh, uh, produce the chalan then declaration of technical staff whether it is a medical officer or technical or nurse uh, anyway his declaration Uh, a formal declaration is there uh, you should uh, uh, i mean attest that one the, along with the attested copies of qualifications then his experience then license and the renewal certificates you have to produce for the endorsement purposes this is for the uh, i mean technical person's name uh, endorsement then for the documents uh, i mean i mean for renewal again covering letter for uh, rupees 5 code of his stamp then i mean and uh, then a form 27c in the case of uh, blood centers uh, for uh, whole blood and the components or 27e for uh, blood products then again chalan uh, chalan you know the the, the details of uh, fee etc we will discuss then there should be an affidavit uh, regarding the ownership or possession of the building then declarations of all the technical staff should be there attested copies of the qualification of all the staff their experience certificates attested copies then plan of the 
uh, premises is important. Then details of constitution, if it is a society or voluntary organization or something like that, if it is a hospital, like that, uh, there is details of constitution, then list of machinery and equipment, then sample labels of all the products and uh, registers which are going to be manufactured and ESOPs regarding the functioning and other things. So these are the documents submitted. And uh, here in Kerala, actually, uh, the one copy should be forwarded to uh, the drug control officer, I mean, Trivandrum. Then concerned ADC also, sometimes uh, one copy is forwarded. Then deputy drug controller, uh, New Delhi, I mean, uh, DCG India, one copy is forwarding. Uh, should be forwarded and deputy controller India of the particular zone. That means here it is uh, Chennai also, usually one copy is sent. Otherwise, all the three copies you can send it to uh, drug control um, or Trivandrum also. Like that also you can do. Uh, then do you want uh, the, the fee details and all? Uh, yes, sir. If you can, you can add it. It will be yeah, helpful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is there. It is there. Yeah, so uh, this is the uh, form of application. Usually it is 27C uh, for the grant of license for the operation of a blood bank or processing of blood bank, I mean blood. And uh, the form of license issued is on 28C and the form of renewal certificate. That means after five, five years of uh, the period, it is given in 26G and uh, 27E, application pertaining to uh, license to manufacture that products like uh, albumin or uh, immunoglobulin etc and the form of license is in 2080 and the form of renewal certificate is 26i then 27f is for processing of collection uh, etc and really uh, banking and the release of umbilical cord blood stem cells and the license is issued in 28f and uh, form of renewal certificate is 26J. And the license fee, actually it is 7,500. And if you, you will be allowed 10 products for in the first time and for each additional product subsequently or along with the first application, rupees 300 per product. And the rupees 1,000 is the, uh, I mean, uh, late fee for each month, maximum up to six months. So if there is delay in renewing the license, means you have to remit, uh, I mean, rupees 10,000 per each month, maximum up to six months. Then head of account for all the, uh, these are uh, 0 to 1, 0, 0 4, 1, 0 4, 99. Okay. Thank you, sir. It was in very detail and it was quite helpful. Thanks a lot. Uh, next question uh, was from uh, Dr. Athirash. She's from uh, Jubilee uh, Mission Medical College. Uh, so she has asked, like, can the results of donor screening be issued to the donor? Or what is the guideline on that? Uh, this was uh, following a discussion in our academic forum. Like, uh, uh, we heard that one of the hospitals was issuing the donor result, like uh, HIV, SPCG, SCV, etc. is negative like that. Obviously, not positive is issued like that. So, uh, a few donor agencies was asking us, well, why not the other hospitals can also issue like that? So, we had a query like, if you are issuing negative results, can we do it positive? No. Then uh, it will be very evident like that. There was a very confusion. It was an area of confusion for us. So, uh, it's a screening test. So can we do it? It's not like a, a standard laboratory or something like that. So what is your opinion, sir? Can we issue that donor results on a paper? Because uh, if it's positive, we are calling them and we are further referring them to, say, if it's HIV to ICTC, HB or HCV to gastro department, uh, VDRL or RPR positive to uh, dermatology or general medicine, like that we are referring. But can we issue the results on a writing? That was the question. Uh, say in uh, DNC, there is no mention on the particular issue. 
and uh, but uh, to my limited knowledge uh, i think as per the nbtc guidelines uh, it can be given to them on demand i don't know whether it is correct or not as uh, anyway uh, suitable care of course should be taken and they, if the result is uh, reactive and with advice or further confirmatory tests and uh, proper counseling should be in place i think this is my opinion and uh, i am not sure whether it is uh, there in the nbtc it is there i think uh, uh we also searched and nothing specific we we found but we were also like uh, having confusion because if you are giving there is uh, like the uh, uh, cavity is increased because we we may release a result to a negative person so his friend might be positive so he may ask we are not giving like that there was an area of it was totally a gray area yeah, and that yeah, discussion yeah, yeah. ended up now well, that's why i think the, from that point only the question was asked anyway yeah, anyway in the end there is no uh, i mean mention about this issue yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fine sir and next question was from dr deepika uh, she is from uh, vm kvm cs medical college so she has asked two questions uh, first question was do we have to apply for license separately for stem cell collection and second question is is it mandatory for a blood center to be located within the hospital or can it be in a separate building or separate uh, place so first is about okay. stem cell sir okay uh, yeah 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 so uh, madam a separate license is uh, not needed if it is by apheresis uh, procedure but uh, the apheresis should be permitted in your blood center only then you can apply for the stem cell collection as a uh, i mean adi as an additional item by remitting rupees 300 to the licensing authority so without approval you cannot do it you have to get it endorsed in your license where apheresis is also permitted okay yeah uh, so next question was whether uh, it's ah, not related ah. to stem cell it was related it was they were asking like uh, is it mandatory that blood center is located within the hospital can it be a separate building next to hospital yeah yeah the, it should be but uh, it can be a separate building but it should be in the same campus yeah that is what uh, we are following okay. yeah in medical colleges and all it's usually like that yeah yeah it's a, yeah, yeah. Building, it's spread right, out that, that should be in the in the campus yes and uh, like uh, additional points what i can add is like uh, if it's too far like say 600 or 700 meter it's the gynecology or the obstetric theater labor room or the uh, uh, casualty so too much distance again you can plan if it's a high throughput center and there might be a delay of uh, getting blood there even in high throughput theaters you can plan a storage center it's an in house yeah. decision a few yeah, hospitals yeah, yeah, yeah. do like that yeah yeah that can be okay sir so yeah. uh, and next question was from uh, dr e shabri priya she is from mgm mcri puducherry she has asked being a private blood center what is the recovery charge from uh, from patients for antibody screening and identification uh, i think uh, there is a latest nbtc guideline or sir do you want to add something it's more or less a technical thing yeah yeah this is actually in the in the dnc i mean price control order there is no mention about its price this is only based on the nbtc uh, guidelines but uh, okay. all are not uh, following it i think and the last guideline it has come uh, in uh, i mean 2020 or something like that 2020 sir actually a latest yeah. amendment has come 6 months back um yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, Uh, june 14th of 2022 they have amended some with minor differences with that 2020 guidelines and they have uh, told like state ha- can have a different policy state can decide their own not uh, more than the amount that nbtc has fixed but lesser than that and yeah. in kerala actually again a committee has been for- formulated and the guidelines will be out uh, in near future so i think the latest guideline uh, as as sir said 
it has nothing much to do with drug controller because they check the quality and standards of blood bank, nothing related to price. But NBTC do regulate it, and it is guideline is that June 14, 2022 order only, sir. Here the thing is, this is actually the processing charge, not the charge for the particular item. Yeah, so that is the yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah. Here in uh, drugs price controller, it should be for a particularly for a drug. So that is the issue. So drug price control cannot be applied here. So we are actually helpless. In <laughs> fact, practically, okay. practically. Yeah. And a few more questions are there, sir. It may take a little more time. Uh, Dr. M. Yazim ha uh, has asked, he's from Government Medical College. Uh, I think uh, the Excel is not complete, so I, I cannot uh, locate his place. Uh, he has asked, our blood center is included in Department of Pathology in NMC faculty declaration. Although faculty recruitment has done separately for uh, Department of Blood Bank, my request is that we want separate department heading NMC declaration and also creation of faculty post in my uh, department. I am selected as a lecturer in department with pay, uh, scale 9, etc. three tier system is there. So, uh, my request is three tier system in Department of Blood Transition, New Medical College of Jammu and Kashmir, also and create uh, intermediate faculty post. So, yes, sir, it's purely related to NMC and faculty post. Uh, you can add your opinion, and after that, I can add my own opinion. Uh, sir, I am sorry, it's not coming under <laughs> DNC rules, and uh, uh -huh. the rule specifically says, I mean, 122G, that uh -huh. uh, they, they uh, I mean, the operation of the blood center, uh, I mean, shall be conducted under the active direction and the personal supervision of competent technical staff. Consisting of uh, at least one person who should be a whole time employee and who is a medical officer having various, I mean, uh, options uh, regarding their experience. Degrees as mentioned in that the is, previous. Yeah, yeah, that is the only thing it is there in the DNC. So, this is a, an internal aspect, and uh, I cannot, uh, I'm sorry that uh, I cannot you, answer sir, that. Something more I can add, actually, uh, as I, far as Riguma sir is concerned, that's according to DNC Act, it is very clear that. Uh, MBBS uh, with uh, one year experience or MD path or DCP or everything is included that we know. Huh? But according to NMC, uh, actually uh, for NMC, two things has to be considered. One is for MBBS uh, teaching and for MD transfusion medicine teaching. Very previously for MD transfusion uh, medicine teaching, MD pathology was considered. Uh, okay, but uh, now uh, recently a document has come that they have well documented that uh, there was a uh, time limit uh, uh, after starting the MD course, there is a time limit, I think it's uh, 15 years or something is there, I'm not sure. After that, it should be replaced by MD transition medicine team. And secondly, there's a question like uh, for uh, till date, uh, say uh, uh, for three months back or something like that, um, it, Blood bank was a mandatory thing, but a transfusion medicine consultant was not like mandatory or something like that. Uh, but recently I heard like, I'm not sure I heard like the, there is the, an amendment is uh, uh, coming and uh, a blood bank is mandatory thing and a specialist should be there and it has to follow NBTC guideline like that something is coming. So over time we can expect a change because uh, uh, MD transfusion medicine might be mandatory thing zone for MBBS teaching and obviously for MD teaching and might be uh, say after five years or so even the DNC act may change if the uh, number of specialists are surplus uh, in the field obviously the DNC act may change uh, but it may take time so as of now for running a blood bank MDTM is not needed for running a department with MD transfusion medicine yes it's needed for MBBS teaching it's on the way it will be uh, like that sir Okay. Uh, okay, sir. I am moving to the next question. Uh, the next question is from uh, Dr. Veena Shenoy. She is from Amrita, and she has asked for every new uh, component a separate label to be prepared while applying for license. For example, irradiated RBC, leuco reduced RBC. If request for irradiated and leuco reduced RBC received, should we have another label for such a product? She's asking whether 
new new labels are needed like that uh, so uh, we are already having a, a label for rbc if it's a modified say if you reduced or related whether we need a new label that's a doubt yeah that, there should be because uh, all these items they are considered as each uh, i mean component so there should be separate label should also be uh, included there okay okay, okay sir so next question was by uh, Dr. Uh, Hitish Narang. He is from uh, Aikai Blood Center, Lutiana. Uh, what is the qualification required for technician and counselor? I think so. You have covered it in the slide, right? So already, already it is covered. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine, sir. The next question is uh, by Dr. Deepa Narang. She is from Calicut Medical College. Um, uh, her question is: What is the format for blood bank label? Uh, will there be a need for QR code? And do we need license for autologous stem cell collection if it's done by a hematologist? So there are two questions, sir. Uh, format for blood uh, whether we, uh, can we, uh, she's asking whether we can incorporate a QR code in a label. I think it, it is, it is not mandatory as per the drug rules. Yeah. But, uh, you can you can yeah. adopt your i mean additionally you can adopt. many of us are doing yeah yeah so yeah. next question yeah. is uh, very specific they have a hematologist there so might be from practical like, practical point of view they might be asking do we need a license for autologous stem cell collection autologous means if they are collecting their own stem cells and utilizing for the same patient uh whether we need a license she has yeah something. approval should be approval should be there should be there Okay. okay, as an additional item, you should you should update. Okay, okay. And a few more questions has come, sir. Then we will go to the inbox. Uh, the question is from one second. Mm, question is from uh, okay. Uh, I don't know who has uh, Rafi has sent me. Uh, can a transgender in a monogamous committee relationship with negative HIV status give blood in India? If not, why so? Uh, okay. Transgender is not permitted, I think. Yeah. It is not permitted. Uh, I think I can add a little more to that question because yeah, please, somehow, please. Yeah, because somehow uh, 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 during the last COVID season, uh, uh, one of the person uh, from uh, a, a community who is working for gender minorities and caste minorities came to the blood bank and he asked, why you have not included a uh, category like male, female, and transgender in our form? So I told transgenders can, cannot donate blood. And he asked why. Then I told him our recent guideline is like that. And uh, then uh, it was taken up to a higher level. And uh, somehow uh, I was a part of the dis discussions. I done the technical side, they done the social side, other things and all. And there was a very strong moment because when it was evaluated, no other country, uh, uh, like almost all the developed countries in the world, uh, is not uh, declining uh, a person in name of gender. Uh, transgender is purely a gender, uh, like uh, like male or like female or whatever it is. It's a gender. And uh, again, uh, there was a confusion with uh, gay or lesbian communities also. It's also different. But uh, say when we look at on UK or US guidelines, uh, even uh, they have changed their gay policy and all. After three months testing, they can give like that. And transgender, none, no were, uh, it was a deferral. And they carried it up to the Supreme Court uh, 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 verdict and all. And uh, personally, I feel it's unfortunate because uh, last week also, uh, the, again, the law has come. They have kept a committee and they have again clarified that a transgender uh, uh, is uh, cannot donate blood like that. The verdict has come. So, to be specific, the uh, the existing order was like that. They revisited, uh, the central government has appointed a committee. They revisited it and they have informed Supreme Court that uh, transgenders cannot donate blood. And again, uh, the rule is reinforced. Uh, data regarding whether it is right or wrong or what is the uh, analysis of risk, everything left apart according to rule as of now, as of today, they cannot donate. Yeah, that. it is. They cannot. And uh, men with uh, men having sex with other men, it's also not permitted. I don't know whether these uh, have some relationship. I don't know. 
Yeah. So okay. next question is actually a very common uh, query for all of us. Uh, now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, now the case of polysythemia is much more, especially in Kerala. I don't know whether uh, you do uh, some food pattern or something, but therapeutic phlebotomy is uh, performed uh, very frequently uh, in our hospitals as a part of treatment. Uh, obviously, uh, we are not taking uh, that blood because they are polycythemics, more or less, we are not taking that uh, blood as a donor or something. So the question is, can we perform therapeutic phlebotomy in the blood bank, whether it is uh, by uh, DNC act, it's okay, that's a query, because different hospitals have different policy. Some hospitals give a bag to the clinical side and do the, some hospitals keep a separate room for that, some do in their donor room itself. So what's your opinion, sir? So uh, polycythemia where it is uh, that patient should be permanently deferred as per DNC. Ah. So, and as a part of uh, their treatment, we are taking blood. So obviously the blood, ah. we, are, uh, we are not going to use their blood. The question okay, is whether okay. we can uh, take the blood, uh, like uh, whether the procedure so can be done the blood bank or not. <laughs> It's a confusing question, and yeah. uh, I, of course, the facility you can say it's for a good thing. I think uh, if there is separate record you are keeping, you can do it because yeah. it's for the human being. Eh? So, I mean, social, uh, very important thing, and there should be some. Uh, yeah, I think you can. You can do it. Why not? Okay. You can do it. It's fine. fine My sir. opinion. Okay, sir, because there are different policies. If you blood bank have yeah. decided a win-win policy, like a small room, it's not a part of the license or something. They have kept it like that. If you are doing oh, yeah. it in the blood bank and if you are uh, not... Yeah, in anyway, that facility, you can use it. No, oh. no, no, not for uh, transfusion or some other thing. So it's a purely... I think you can do it. You okay, do it. sir. Okay, now I am going into the inbox questions. Uh, regarding irradiation facility, one of the questions is regarding irradiation facility, should a radiator be present within the blood center premises? If not, is it possible to use hospital radiation facility for blood components? Like, uh, irradiation is a costly thing. It cannot be within the blood bank. The, the person who has asked might have thought like that. So they are uh, asking whether it should be in the blood bank premises or hospital uh, there might be some linear access or some other uh, facility might be there in the radiology uh, or radiotherapy department. Now it's known as yeah, uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah, you can you can do it because in the case of hospitals, even some other thing is also uh, the I mean sterilization come uh, I mean uh, like that uh, that procedures you can adopt common uh, in oh. common. So like that, you can use the, the facility in the other department for this purpose. It is very costly and it takes uh, too much, uh, I mean, area also. Oh, okay. Fine. Yeah, Fine. you can use. Uh. Next question is a little ambiguous, sir. Please mention about important point while applying for a new product permission. I think it's uh, covered somewhat, right? Whether something extra yeah, is there? It it is it is all already covered. It's I mean, already covered. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the details I specified along with the application for grant or renewal. Yeah, yeah. It's covered. Yeah, yeah. Next yeah. question is also again related to radiation. How will get the license for irradiated product by using a uh, linear accelerator? I think, sir, sir, it's so it's fine, right? Uh, that's already, I mean, uh, the technical things ah. uh, not uh, radiated, uh, not much familiar on that uh, radiated cases. Anyway, can ah. you uh, just repeat the question once again? Uh, the uh, person has asked, how will get the license for irradiated products by using linear accelerator? Linear accelerator, it is used for, uh, I mean, irradiation purpose, eh? Ah, whether they, they, uh, I think they have men like uh, using linear accelerator if they are planning to radiate, whether a uh, drug control department will be uh, giving license for that. Anyway, that uh, particular unit, everything will be uh, okay. I mean, uh, irradiation that uh, I mean, actually, unit. Uh, linear accelerator? Be, uh, 
sir uh, the yeah. linear oxide uh, is usually used in radiation oncology so can that equipment uh, be used for uh, irradiating blood i think that is the question yeah there. if i i think it can it can be because uh, there is no particular specification for uh, the the unit about the unit in the dnc so it can be it can be used oh okay. anyway i should oh. uh, i should confirm it uh, please take uh, give some more time anyway it is not specified what type of irradiation technique should be there that is not there in the dnc that means this also if it uh, i mean ensures that full radiation and uh, i mean if it is there it can be i think uh, it's okay. fine sir. it's fine uh, uh, so next was from dr davud baba he has asked to do the drug control authorities have different policies in different states because uh, he uh, in some states there is no license needed for therapeutic procedures some states insist on taking a license for these two Dawood has studied in one state, uh, MBBS in another state, so he has exposure with two, three states. So he has asked, yeah. uh, like, uh, uh, the, whether there is some difference in policy. Though even it is centralized, uh, organized in a central manner, whether there is some differences, he's asking like that. Anyway, there should be some differences, but uh, everything is controlled by DCG India, and uh, uh, in inspection is uh, a combined inspection only. So, as per the latest uh, amendment, uh, it should be uniform. Oh. Anyway, the therapeutic cases we discussed already. So, there should be a uniform, uh, I mean, application. Okay, okay, sir. And next question uh, is, what are the documents uh, we need to submit for getting license for peripheral blood stem cell harvest? Uh, peripheral blood cell, uh, I mean, stem cell harvest, you should have an apheresis, uh, I mean, area, and you should provide the, all the facilities and equipment for apheresis and the stem cell separation and the full SOPs you should uh, uh, give, along with the additional item uh, and application for additional item for the permit, uh, I mean, 300 rupees uh, you should uh, remit. So okay. SOP should be there, label should be there. Okay. Oh. Okay, sir. Yeah. Procedures. Next question was so means including the... including all the procedures and yeah. uh, it's quality tests everything. Okay. Okay, yeah. sir. Okay, sir. Next question was from P. Sims. Uh, 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 the uh, doctor has asked for the fee for change in blood bank plan. Ah. Oh. Uh, uh, plan. Uh, Say plan means if it is a new premises or it's uh, just extension or something like that. What is the if it's a new I mean, permit? Uh, what is the policy, sir? There's a fee or something? No, no, no fee. You have to submit the seven thousand five hundred plus plan. You should plan. There should not be any. I mean approval or for the plan. Everything is consolidated and you can apply. It's inclusive in Previous, the renewal, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Renewal or uh, grant of license. Anyway, oh. if there is some change in the premises or extension or something like that, uh, you should get the approval. That's all. That's all. No because, fees. Yeah. Then, then actually, we are uh, thousand rupees. We are charging if it is addition. I mean, some extension or something like that after getting the license. Oh. Okay. But it may be exempted in the case of government issues. Okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, a doctor named RS might be the some other expansion, I don't know. Uh, the doctor has asked two questions related to irradiation. First one is how to apply for irradiation for blood. Is it the same form 27C? Irradiated blood, yeah, 27C. Yeah. Same, the, same, okay. same. A second same. question was that, can we have a radiator in the separate building within 500 uh, minute, uh, Dr. Mankiaman meters, as we didn't have space in installing the machine in the ground floor of the building where our blood bank is. So 500 meter distance with another radiator like attached to same blood bank, is it fine or not? Uh, the doctor has asked. Yeah, it's okay, I think. 500 me meter means half kilometer, right? Okay, it's okay. I think. You can, you can. Uh, okay. Now, but it's next. In the same, same campus only. Eh? 
Yeah, same campus only, yes. sir. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, next question is, is there any norms as to how mother blood bank can charge on the blood unit supply to the storage center if utilized by them? Again, it's a question related to charges. I think yeah, it yeah, might yeah, be yeah. same as the NBTC rules and the MOU between mother and... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, and the, the, the blood center, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, another question is important point while applying for new product launch is covered. Now, yeah. what is the fee to be paid for change of plan? Again, it has come in discussion. Now, RS yeah, again, is. Uh, one question is there from RS. Sir, we have the license for peripheral blood stem cell collection. Do we need separate license for cryopreservation of peripheral blood stem cells? I don't think so. So oh. no separate uh, cryopreservation is only a method of uh, storage. So yes, yes. It cannot right. be considered as a separate product. Okay, you can do it without a problem. Okay. okay. So that's uh, with the question that has come. A lot of question, which means everyone is interested in the topic and everyone is interested in the uh, like uh, what we have to know from you. We we'll grab something from you. Actually, if more questions are there, you can just open your. Uh, uh, microphone and ask uh, uh, for next uh, five or ten minutes, no issue. Uh, if some doubt is there, you can just come to the uh, platform and share. Okay, I think everyone is done. Uh, anyway, it was an excellent session, sir. And uh, we feel like it should be a whole day or two day session because a lot thing to discuss and uh, more uh, to go forward uh, with uh, the administrators or drug licensing authorities. Too happy to hear because whatever we say from our subject side, ultimately it's a policy matter, it's a legal matter. So ultimately uh, uh, the things are or the view of the uh, drug controller matters a lot. Uh, so, Rafi, what's up? Can we uh, wind up the session? Thank you, Sajit, sir, for chairing the session. Yeah. And Sri Kumar, sir, for that excellent presentation. So, uh, let, let, let me add a few points also in the case of offenses and penalties. That also you should know. Okay. For uh, any drug under the, I mean, if it is adulterated, that means adulterated or spurious, which causes serious harms or death, the penalty is imprisonment shall not be less than 10 years and may extend to lifetime and fine not less than 10 lakhs. <laughs> and uh, if, it, <laughs> if it is adulterated, but uh, not uh, causing any serious harm or death, then uh, it shall not be less than three years and may extend up to five years at time. And yeah. not less than one lakh uh, fine. I mean, fine is uh, not less than one lakh. Then if it is, I mean, spurious means uh, without license or something like that, it's, uh, it may, I mean, should not be less than seven years and may extend to life and fine, not less than three lakhs. And uh, for the other cases, I mean, other parameters, if, if it is serious, then it should it will be having uh, an imprisonment up to two years, one to two years, and fine not less than 20,000. This is the a common offense and penalty. It is applicable to here also. It is applicable, that's all. Uh, so one last question, uh, which has come in the inbox. It's a very genuine yeah. question because uh, more or less, uh, many uh, hospitals, especially that corporate private hospitals, are going to Afrasis products only. Like UK or US, uh, we can expect it can happen in anywhere in India in some another 30 or 40 years. So uh, the uh, doctor has asked whether can we have a Afrasis license without blood bank license? No, 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 no. As per the <laughs> so existing now, rule, it cannot be. Yeah, so now I think be. it's not possible, right? 
yeah 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 but uh, like uh, it may come as a need in upcoming years say uh, in another five or 10 years it may decide. yeah yeah it will be it will be like bank license and uh, FRS license yeah 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 uh so happy to uh, see sri kumar sir here because uh, once had, again thank you all <laughs> thank you all the participants uh, who actually in made this yeah, yeah, yeah it's in very lovely and not just the very and actually yeah. in that part 2020 we plan like we will meet frequently but after yeah, maybe yeah. then covid yeah, yeah, came uh, all COVID the past like that yeah. okay Thank you, sir. I so, I remember that. <laughs> Again, uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, at that time, COVID has just started. Detected. Yeah, that. yeah, and, yeah. It was immediately March after 7th, that. Our, uh, our Trishur meeting yeah, yeah. was on March seventh, and yeah, yeah. in fact, yes, another yes. meeting was planned on twelfth, but it was um, uh, uh, it was it uh, cancelled uh, yeah, due to that late. COVID. Okay, yeah. okay. So happy okay. to hear you. Uh, so thank you, sir, for coming us and enlightening us. Thank in you, Doctor Sajid. And obviously, Dr. we will be <laughs> all the all the participants. Thank you so much. Yeah, and we will be calling you more frequently. Uh, yeah, if yeah. you don't yeah. definitely. Yeah. I'll I'll. <laughs> it's a pleasure for me. Okay. And privilege. Thank you so much. Thank you. All. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sajit sir, for chairing the session. And thank you, Srikumar sir, for that elaborate and knowledge enhancing talk. The link for participation certificate is being shared in the chat box. Kindly fill the same so that the certificates will be sent to your mail IDs. With this, we have come to the end of today's webinar. Thank, thanks for the patient listening. Thank you all and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.